Hey, what's up, witches? It's been a while since I've filmed a tour of my altar setups, and I've done a little bit of redecorating since then, so I thought that it would be fun to do a little updated show-and-tell altar video for you guys and show you what's currently on my Rainier altars for Frey and Freya, and then take you on a uh, take you on a little sightseeing tour, if you will, of the new things on the Odin and Loki altar. So, let's get started. So, here's my Freya altar. I have my statue there in the middle, as always. And right now I just have some fake flowers in that little vase over there that I found at Goodwill. Sometimes I'll put real flowers in there if I have them, but I just feel like she needs some type of flowers next to her, so I just keep those there in the meantime. On either side is an amethyst pillar and the flower agate. Next to that is a beautiful big piece of raw amber that I just picked up from a local like gem, rock, and mineral store. They hadn't, I haven't seen any amber in there before, um, polished or otherwise, so seeing the nice big pieces of raw amber in there was pretty cool. I definitely associate amber with Freya a lot and her necklace Brisingamen, so definitely had to pick up a piece of that to decorate her altar. Next to that is a vial of some water that I collected um, on a hike uh, during our latest gathering trip for midsummer. We did a little ritual to her mother Nerthus at that site and I did a little offering to Freya and Freya there as well so I collected some water to bring back with me. And then in front we have my nice big quartz pillar as always, and then the rose quartz and opalite pyramids, my big selenite wand, and then I've just been leaving this nice big piece of labradorite here in this shell next to some symbols of the sea for her Vanir sign, so I have a nice piece of coral there. And next to that is a big piece of rose quartz that I have had since childhood, which I definitely associate with love and relationships and the heart chakra, all those things that Freya is in charge of. And next to that we have some the lucky cats, some costume jewelry, which at some point I will probably give as offerings, but I keep on the altar until then. And then my beloved dear Kirby boy, may he rest in peace. And then next to him, a picture of his predecessor, Dusty. Down here is the Freyer altar. This has undergone um, a couple changes since I first set it up over here. You can see I've moved the little Freyer statue into the middle. And he's sitting on top of... A part of a sand dollar that I actually collected from the beach on the Oregon coast when I was there a few summers ago. I was not Norse pagan at the time and so originally I thought maybe I hadn't even kept the sand dollars and shells that I picked up when I was beach combing. But when I was cleaning out some closets in my little crafty witchy room a while back, I did manage to find them stashed away somewhere, and I thought that, that would be a great thing to offer up to the Vanir or just put on their altar spaces to um, symbolize their tie to water and their father, Njord, who's more of a god presiding over the oceans and the coast, and, and like fishermen and then like the merchant trade, all those things. So as you can see on the altar here, I've kind of split it down the middle. And on this half, I have on this half I have some seashells and a bit of 
preserved coral to symbolize his kind of oceanic side of the Von Air vibes. And then on this side, I have things to symbolize his land or earth fertility aspects. So in the middle, and then in the middle here is a beautiful flint napped knife with an antler handle that I picked up at the local mineral slash rock shop and it was made by a local craftsman. When the shop first opened, I kept seeing this in the display case and being very drawn to it. I just think like obsidian type daggers are very magical uh, and interesting and just powerfully significant um, ritual objects to me. And I know they are in many other cultures as well. So I kept seeing this, but it was, you know, a little bit out of my price range and not, you know, anything I kept telling myself that I needed, so I would pass it by. And months and weeks would go by, and every time I would walk in, it was still there. So one day I told myself, all right, it's payday, I'm going to go check out the local, the, the shiny rock store, and if this knife is still there, I'll buy it. Because then, you know, yeah, it was, it was meant to be, it was meant for me to have it. So, sure enough, it was still there in the display case, so I finally took it home with me. And since Freyr is said to wield an antler in the Battle of Ragnarok, I thought it was a very good... I thought it was appropriate to keep it here on his altar for now. And eventually I plan to make a sheath for it and use it as a ritual knife. Next to that over here is just a few little objects I've collected that, as I said, are just more tied to his land aspects. This is a rock I picked up along the shores of the Illinois Mississippi River when I made my first offering to Njord there. Some acorns I picked up on our walks, um, a little piece of what I believe is petrified wood that we gathered out of the riverbed at midsummer, a bloodstone, the Gulen Bursty statue. I'm not sure what type of succulent this is, but it has the softest little fuzzy leaves, and I just really want a plant here next to him. So hopefully, this being a succulent and a little bit more low maintenance than some of the other plants that I've unsuccessfully tried will be able to hold up here in the, the low light we kind of get in this room. And then down here, this is very cool. This is a piece of deer vertebra that was given to my husband by someone at Midsummer, and you can see it's a little burnt or charred. So being a deer bone that was touched by Surtur, if you will, who is Freyr's destined opponent at Ragnarok. That definitely belonged to him as well. So there you have it. That's pretty much all of the current things sitting on the Freyr altar. Hi, Loki. Mm hmm You have something to say? Had to make your special bonus appearance in this video? Alright, so there was a quick little update of my uh, Vayner altars for you, and next we'll head into the front room and I'll show you the Odin and Loki uh, Aesir altar, if you will. So, come on, let's go! Okay, so the Odin Loki altar has undergone some pretty significant changes from when I first set it up. I've acquired many more objects for it. I feel like I had a lot more stuff that I had just been collecting slash hoarding over the years that um, were just things that appealed to me that I used on the Freya altar, but I didn't really have a whole lot at first to put on this altar, so it has quite a little bit more to it now. Um, back here is a wood-burning piece that I'm still <laughs> working on. Um, it 
It's something I started right after I set up the Odin altar and decided to start working with him, but it is so big and so time consuming to fill it all in like this that it has taken me months to just get this much done just whenever I've had spare time to work on it. So that will be finished and stained at some point to serve as a little backdrop here. And then in back here is a little carved wood box for storing things in a little raven statuette, which is uh, honestly just a reappropriated Halloween decoration. Some more deer vertebrae that I believe were found and given to us at Ostara, our first gathering. And then inside of that are two canine teeth that were gifts given to us at Midsummer, and in the middle there, it might be kind of hard to see in this lighting, is a big chunk of purple fluorite in a kind of diamond or pyramid shape, um, which was also something that I kept seeing in the display case at the Rock uh, Gem Store. And there was one day when I was, you know, kind of sitting here at the altar, um, and I'll be honest, I had been really neglecting the altar, neglecting the altar space, not spending uh, really a lot of time here. And so I was sitting here one day, kind of trying to make up for lost time, and I had this little bird sitting here and kind of just pictured that stone that I, because every time I'd go in, I'd see that and be like, oh, that that'd be so, like, that's so cool looking. I bet Odin would really like that. Something about the shape. The, the darkness uh, of it, and to me it almost uh, represents like the eye that he sacrificed at the Well of Mimir uh, to gain knowledge. And so I, in my mind's eye, I was just picturing this stone sitting there underneath that uh, raven statue. And I decided that, you know, maybe that meant that, uh, yeah, Odin wouldn't mind if it at all if I went back and picked that up for him and put that there as a gift, especially since I did have so many crystals and shiny rocks that I had been collecting for the Freya altar, but I didn't have any such thing for him yet, really, so maybe he just wanted a little crystal of his own, but just the, the shape, uh, the associations of it, and the symbolism of it to me made it something that I just wanted to incorporate. Over here on the Loki side, um, you'll see we have a set of antlers on the altar now, um, which after I had decided to become a Norse pagan, it turned out that one of my husband's co-workers was also a pagan of sorts and a hunter, which we are not, so I said, hey! Maybe you could ask them if they have some spare antlers laying around that we could use for offerings. Um, so they were donated to us. I had originally wanted them for my Freyr altar, because I associated him with stag imagery a lot, but apparently they were appropriated by Odin and Loki. The interesting thing about these antlers is and I don't know why why this is, um, why this is a symbol that I associate with the two of them, or with Loki in particular, and it's something, I don't know if maybe um, it's a, a holdover in my brain, like an influence from Marvel Loki, because it's something that I've seen his, Marvel Loki depicted as, as well, is this whole f concept where there's one whole antler and one broken one where the tip is broken off and so you'll see Marvel Loki depicted that way sometimes where he has the horned helm on but one of the antlers is broken and I also had some like antler uh, like deer decor that I had picked up for Christmas 
and there were two of them in in the shop and one was fine and the other one like one of the antlers had the tip broken off and something was pulling me to like no you have to get the one that's broken so it's, it's interesting to me that that those were the ones that we were ended up being given so like the broken one over here on the left which is loki's side and you will see um next to that is a little painted uh, deer bone which was made and given to me at my first gathering at Ostara. There's a little depiction of Loki there, looking like his little cheeky self. And then there are some ashes from a fire, which was used to do a Loki ritual at another gathering, which I did not attend, but was given to me as someone who does follow Loki, so that lives there at his altar now. Maybe it will be incorporated in some spell work at some point, who knows. And when I was picking up some wine the other day, uh, he wanted a little bottle of Fireball. And I just kind of don't ask questions when I get uh, pretty clear messages like that. I just go with the flow now. And then in the middle there, you'll see a big lantern that was given into our care at the Midsummer Gathering. Um, at that gathering, I actually led a joint ritual or bloat or offering ceremony, whatever you want to call it, to both Odin and Loki. Um, it was the first time I have ever led a public ritual for people that I had mostly never met before, and as someone who is terrified of public speaking. So it definitely um, really tested me and pushed me out of my comfort zone in many ways, and I felt like I was definitely yeah, being tested by both Odin and Loki to um, step out of that comfort zone and get out there um, and do something for them, um, especially for Loki. You know, he gets kind of antsy sometimes, when he feels like he's not the center of attention, so um, the whole weekend leading up to doing that ritual, you know, I could kind of tell that he was getting impatient with us, but luckily the rain managed to stop just long enough that night for us to have a little fire ceremony for them. And so when we were packing up to leave, um, this lantern was given into mine and my husband's care. So has um, both me and my husband now, being followers of Odin, uh, we were entrusted with it. So no pressure, but it will have a nice home here on their altar until the next gathering. In front of that are the dual drinking horns. You will may have noticed that they are new drinking horns. Um, they are not the original ones that came with this wooden stand here. Because those horns, while very lovely um, and matchy-matchy, the, the horns themselves just were not very good quality. Um, the metal, there was like a metal lip around the top of the horns and it kept like peeling up on the inside and as well me just you know, being new to the whole concept of drinking horns in general I don't believe that they came sealed because I mean it's a horn it's literally a horn that came from a cow and it smells like it like when they are not sealed or treated it smells like a dog chew toy I'm not gonna lie so I tried uh, the best that I could, just did my, some research on the internet to try to figure out how to like cure them or seal them, um, and I wasn't really too concerned about it being totally safe for humans to drink out of because they were not to be used for human um, consumption. They are solely dedicated to the, the purpose of leaving offerings at the altar, but um, they just didn't hold up to having the liquids uh, stored in them, and it just uh, really deteriorated quickly in quality, and I'll be honest, I am not the most attentive or cleanly person at times, and there would definitely be one or two 
days where I'd like pour some beer into the horn and then kind of forget about it for a day or two until I remembered, oh shit, yeah, I should probably go back and clean that up. Those horns just were, I think, beyond uh, cleaning out and still being sanitary after a certain point, just with not, uh, like I had tried to just seal them with wax and then eventually just varnish, but it just wore off after a while and so... So yeah, a long story short, they just did not hold up, um, the quality was just not very good, and so I ordered these new ones. They're definitely a lot better, I just got them off of Etsy, and I'll link the shop down below, but they're a lot thicker than the original ones that I had, like I can tell that the horn itself is just a lot sturdier, a lot thicker, and that it has been entirely clear coated and sealed. There was no odor to them whatsoever, and what I liked about this shop was they had different sizes available to choose from. I think there was even a slightly smaller size than this, which would be cool for like a travel altar or bringing with you. But I went for the um, second smallest size, which I figured would fit in this stand, and you know, if I'm just using it for um, giving, offering drinks, we don't really need to be pouring out a whole glass every time over here. Just a little, a uh, little sipple every now and then will hold them over, so they didn't need to be massive horns. I'm really satisfied with the quality of these. We'll see how they hold up to having um, drinks poured in them, but I will, am also vowing to be much uh, more strict and stringent about um, altar cleanliness and making sure that I dispose of things in a timely manner because it's just plain respectful. I really like the way they look and I'm really happy with them. And then um, I, this is the original um, little, what do you want to call it, little brassiere thing that I bought for burning charcoal discs and cone incense, but then I didn't have anything here for stick incense, so I just picked this up at the local uh, hippie shop down the street when I was there picking up some incense the other day. There you have it, guys. That is all of the update to the Aesir altar. Hey, it's me again. So in this video, I thought it would also be fun if I took you guys on a little tour of my outdoor altars. I don't think I've really talked about or uh, shown them on my channel before because they're uh, really informal. I don't have really anything on them. They're just designated areas of my backyard where I leave offerings to the land spirits um, and so what I will do is first show you this little spot behind me which is a uh, under the base of this tree which I kind of call either like I started off calling it the fairy tree when we first moved into the house because it's just this cute little flowering dogwood tree um, all by itself in the yard and now I kind of call it of either the fairy tree or the hell tree because it's kind of half alive and half dead. So it's been interesting to see how the tree has really kind of started to come back to life and thrive uh, since I have started using it as an altar space. So let me show you what that is. So here's the tree over here along the fence and this time of year it's pretty overgrown some little wild flowers there and if we come down here to the base of the tree in all the foliage you will see oh a very rotted board i can't even move it anymore this was where i was kind of uh using this this old board um, as the place to leave the offerings and then I found this stick that kind of looks like the uh, which one is it it looks like a rune 
I'm gonna have to look up which one it is because I always get them mixed up. But I'll uh, I'll put a little uh, little subtitle in below when I figure out what it is. But it looks like a rune, so I keep it out here at the outdoor altar. And this is the the hell tree because as you can see, this side is kind of pockmarked and scarred, and then the other trunk is thriving and alive but it just really makes this peaceful secluded spot where I can come to give offerings to mostly the land spirits um, this is where I'll come bring offerings of like food after they've been on the um, indoor altars if it's something that's not like totally nasty or moldy or rotted and you know just say like some stale bread or dried fruit or something um if i don't want to just take it to the compost heap sometimes i'll bring it out here and leave the remainders for the land spirits slash you know birds and squirrels whatever to come have you guys hear that I think the neighborhood uh, crow friends are out back somewhere. I can hear them. But yeah, I really love having this little outdoor altar space. I've done a few specific offerings to hell or like an earth mother out here. But for the most part, I just... Um, use it to offer to the land itself. What you doing out there, baby? Mm, I see you. And it's kind of appropriate that Thor is coming this way from the back corner of the yard there because that is the last thing that I want to show you, which is the early beginnings of our outdoor Thor altar. Mm-hmm. Not you, Thor. Actual God Thor. I'd been feeling the pull for the last couple months to dedicate an outdoor space to Thor. And I felt like it needed to be back here in this corner. So what I've done here so far, eventually I'd like to um, build a big stack of rocks up in the middle where that offering bowl is. And you'll see what... You'll see here, kind of surrounding this little tuft of earth, are all these rocks. And so when we were tilling up our garden, this spring. Our soil is very rocky, so we were pulling all kinds of stones out of the dirt as we were trying to till up the soil and dig down so we could plant our potatoes. And, and it got me thinking about how Thor's mother, Jord, is an earth giantess. We were digging these stones out of the earth, and yet in the process, it was also making the earth more fertile. And so rather than just dumping these stones in a pile somewhere and forgetting about them, I decided to collect them and just start arranging them in a semicircle here where there was kind of just a natural bare patch of earth forming this shape. And so that's kind of just what I've kept doing is bringing rocks over here and stacking them up to make just a little dedicated area for Thor and his mother. So it's very early beginnings right now. There's not much to it. I think um, what I'm going to start doing is every time we go on a hike or on a trip somewhere, finding a nice rock and uh, bringing it back to add to the collection. So, 
This is just kind of where I come uh, when I feel the need to offer to Thor right now. Oh god, and I'm being eaten alive by mosquitoes, so I'm gonna go back inside. I hope you enjoyed this quick little update tour video. And until next time, stay classy, Pagan. Merlin. He's a Merlin. <laughs>